What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. We are back with another This Week in Destiny, giving you all the heads up on everything that you can expect for the up and coming week. This week sees the return of Iron Banner to Season 19, the launch of a brand new mode called Fortress. We also have a new Catalyst Exotic Quest, a full breakdown of all the weekly rituals, and more importantly what Tess has available for Bright Dust this week. As always, there's a lot to get through, so be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video be sure to leave a comment and rating down below and remember to subscribe for more destiny 2 content just over 70 percent of the viewers on the channel aren't currently subscribed so make sure to hit that red button and ring that bell to ensure you don't miss an update but without further delay guys let's jump into the video another week and another this week in destiny and this week sees the return of iron banner now iron banner isn't just returning it comes with a new mode and is completely replacing the quick play node over in the crucible for the week so fully expect player count to be high and with the new skill based matchmaking in effect fingers crossed for an enjoyable experience but in season 19 iron banner returns with fortress now in fortress's main core gameplay it's about capturing and holding zones which very much sounds like zone control but the fun really begins when Keitel starts to get involved. We'll be able to spawn some Cabal defences to protect our zones. But in terms of the rest of the details, Bungie are keeping those close to their chest. This launches on the 3rd of January upon Tuesday's weekly reset. And to coincide with a brand new mode, we also have some new rewards to chase. We have a reprised armor set from Destiny 1. And as well as that armor set, we have two reprised weapons. We have the Dark Decider, a rapid frame auto rifle, which is returning with new perks and also the Iron Banner Origin trait. And the same can be said for the Gonora's Axe, an absolutely formidable pinpoint slug frame shotgun, which is likely to be just as deadly upon its return. So whether you're chasing armor, weapons, or those sweet additional pinnacle rewards, make sure to jump into Arm Banner this week to get your hands on those. Now from here, we're going to move on to the King's Fall Raid Challenge for week five, and this rotates around to the grass is always greener. This takes place over in a totems encounter, and players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. To get this challenge done, you'll need to rotate from left to right or right to left, depending on which side that you start on. And you'll need to work well as a team to ensure you're taking out those champions as well as being on top of ad control over on the totems now as the raid challenge a extra raid chest is up for grabs this will offer additional harrowed loot on top of pinnacle rewards now from here we're going to move on to the featured raid and dungeon content for the week this week sees the vow of the disciple return as the featured raid now as the featured raid all the challenges will be available a perfect chance to finish that Disciple Slayer seal and on top of that all the encounters are repeatable giving you a perfect chance to farm out deep sight resonance weapons. So whether you're chasing weapons or armor or even want to farm out the collective obligation from Rolk the final boss all those options are available to you upon this week's weekly reset. Now as for the featured dungeon duality enters rotation this launched alongside Season of the Haunted just a few seasons ago and sees you taking on Keitel as the final boss. And much like Rolk over in the raid, if you can defeat Keitel, she'll also offer a pinnacle reward, perfect if you're still on the power grind. Now next up we're going to move on to Dares of Eternity and this 30th anniversary pack activity. Now this season has seen the entire loot pool be updated, so instead of three rotating weeks, we in fact have four. So with that in mind, we also have new armor sets in rotation. This week sees the Wild Hunt armor set return from Season of the Hunt way back from Season 12. And to go alongside that, we also have the Scatterhorn armor set way back from Forsaken. Now these armor sets can drop during the activity upon completion or by handing in strange coins over at the Star Horse over in the Treasure Horde. Now to go alongside Season of the Hunt armor, we also have Season of the Hunt weapons. This week sees the Arsenic Bite Bow Return alongside the Blast Batu, the Corsair's Wrath Linear Fusion Rifle, the Deafening Whisper Wave Grenade Launcher, the Dire Promise Hand Cannon, the Enigma's Draw Sidearm, the Escape Velocity Submachine Gun, the GN7 Pulse Rifle, the Royal Chase Scout Rifle, the True Prophecy, and also the Friction Fire SMG. Some of these weapons from Season of the Hunt are still entirely unique, even today, and are still well worth chasing down. So if you wasn't playing Destiny way back in Season 12, or don't have God Rolls on those weapons, it is now a perfect chance to get them via the Dares of Eternity activity. Now next up we're going to move on to the weekly rituals and we have a new nightfall for week 5 and we see the glassway return 
as a nightfall and eventually a grandmaster nightfall in season 19. Now the glassway used to be one of the more challenging nightfalls in the rotation but with just how powerful we are and due to some of the reworks on the subclasses it doesn't pose the same challenge as it used to. But with that being said there will be a new nightfall exclusive weapon on offer and as soon as we know what that is we'll be sure to add it to the pinned comment down in the comments below. Now alongside the glassway we also see rumble return as a crucible rotator. Now rumble loads you into a map with six guardians all facing each other. It's a perfect place to try your 1v1s or work on your map awareness or if you're trying a new loadout I want to improve your gun skill. But as a featured crucible mode it will also be offering a pinnacle reward. Now as for bonus ranks this week these are actually available in the vanguard playlist so if you're going to be grinding out the glassway nightfall chasing that nightfall exclusive reward this will be the perfect ritual activity to run if you're chasing down the ritual weapon for this season. Now this will be required as part of a seasonal challenge this week and we'll cover that later in the video. Next up though we're going to jump onto the lost sectors for week 5 and which ones will be available and what rewards they'll be offering. Now on Tuesday's reset we'll be heading over to Europa and the Perdition to face barrier and overload champions with the chance of obtaining an exotic chess piece. As for Wednesday we'll be heading over to the Throne World and Spulcher to face barrier and unstoppable champions with a chance at exotic helmets. As for Thursday extraction is back with Overload and Unstoppables this week giving you that weekly chance at those exotic boots. On Friday we'll be heading over to the Dreaming City and the Chamber of Starlight with Overloads and Unstoppables giving you a chance at a pair of exotic gauntlets. As for Saturday, Affilian's Rest is back with Overloads and Unstoppables as well, this time though giving you a second chance at those exotic chess pieces. As for Sunday, we'll be heading over to the Moon and the K1 Logistics to face Barrier and Overload Champions, which will be offering up exotic helmets. And finally for the Daily Reset on Monday, we'll be heading over to the K1 Crew Quarters with Barrier and Overloads as well, this time though offering you a second chance are those exotic boots. Once again if you're still chasing down the exotics from previous seasons be sure to plan your week accordingly and if you want to check out this calendar for yourself make sure to do so over in Today in Destiny and I'll leave the link to that down in the video description below. Now next up we're going to move on to seasonal challenges and there are just seven seasonal challenges for week five of Season of the Serith. Three of them are classified. The ones that we can see though include quick heists and here you need to complete a heist battleground in under 12 minutes. That's followed by timeless iteration and here you need to acquire the Veles X Pulse Rifle. This is the ritual weapon which you'll easily be able to obtain via the Vanguard playlist this week. That's followed by Iron Sharpens Iron and here you need to complete Iron Banner matches and you earn bonus progress for wins. And the final challenge we can see is called Fell and Fallen and here you need to defeat Fallen and Hive bosses in strikes or via the Vanguard playlists. Now all of these challenges offer Challenger XP with most offering Bright Dust which brings us nicely onto the final section of today's video which is what Tess has available for Bright Dust in week 5 of Season of the Serith. Now over in the featured Bright Dust shelf we have an exotic emote called Spill the Tea. Massive shout out to Ivy for sharing this footage. So if you missed out on this, this is available this week for 3,250 Bright Dust. Next up we have the Container 4 exotic Ghost Shell. Now this is from Season of the Plunder and actually formed part of a cosmetic set. So if you missed out on this one, this is available for 2,850 Bright Dust this week. That's alongside Signal Intercept, a legendary transmat effect from Season of the Risen. So once again, if you missed out on this, this is available for 450 Bright Dust. As for the shader this week, we have Empirical Imperative, brand new for this season and looks absolutely awesome here on my Warlock. This hasn't been available yet this season, so make sure to pick this one up and this will set you back 300 Bright Dust. Now over in the main Bright Dust store we have another exotic emote called Bad Scene. This often reminds me of when I open my Twitter account. So if you like the look of this and fancy picking it up this will set you back 3250 Bright Dust this week. Next up we have another legendary emote this is called Keeping Score. Once again massive shout out to Ivy for this one and if you like the look of it this will set you back 700 Bright Dust this week. 
That's alongside the Warton Peregrine, an exotic sparrow from Season of the Haunted. So if you missed out on this one, this will set you back 2,500 bright dust this week. That's alongside the exotic ghost shell called Simulation. This is from Season of Dawn, way back from Season 9. So if you missed out on this, this will set you back 2,850 bright dust. Now next up we have exotic armor ornaments, so these will vary depending on which class of guardian you visit Tess with. For the hunters you have one for your assassin's cow called the gilded memento. For the titans you have one for your sight and ramparts called the nouveau parapet. And for your warlocks you have one for your geomag stabilizers called alternate conduction. Each one will set you back 1500 bright dust, so be sure to pay Tess a visit on all three classes if you want to pick them all up. Now alongside those we have the thumbs down legendary ghost projection. This is from Season of the Chosen. So if you are collecting these, this will set you back a small remortgage at 1500 Bright Dust. And the final item on offer is the Felsic Pyroclasm, which is an awesome exotic weapon ornament for the Prometheus Lens. So if you missed out on this one from Season of the Plunder, you have another chance this week for 1250 Bright Dust. So there we have it guys, a good look on everything that you can expect in week 5 of Season of the Seraph. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.